Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to this great event and giving me the opportunity to present my research. Okay, uh, let's get started with my presentation. I'm Chang Lee, working at Korea Railroad Research Institute as a senior researcher. Today, I'm gonna to talk about a method to estimate the uh, stress-free temperature of uh, continuous world rail, CWR, uh, utilizing the characteristics of the ultrasonic rate propagation. Uh, for the past three years, uh, our research team has been working on a, a study to predict the, the lifespan of the CWR and to determine uh, whether the lifespan values uh, for the CWR in the track maintenance guidelines are appropriate. Uh, my research uh, was conducted as one of several sub-items of the work. Uh, I will explain the details of my uh, research from now on. Oh, okay, let's move to the next page. <clears throat> uh, this is the contents of my presentation. Firstly, the research background, including motivations and objectives, is addressed. addressed. And then uh, I will describe the development of an algorithm to estimate the stress-free temperature of the CWR. The developed algorithm has been validated by lab-scale experiments, uh, which will be discussed next. Finally, my presentation will be ended with concluding remarks. Uh, as we all know, the average temperature is rising due to climate change around the world, and it is also rising in Korea. Uh, this figure still shows the change in temperature in South Korea over the past 100 years. Uh, as, you can, uh, as you can see here, uh, the average uh, average uh, annual maximum, minimum, and mean temperatures have all been increasing. Uh, while the numbers uh, may not seem like a lot, uh, the, the fact of the matter is that temperatures have been rising steadily, and uh, we are seeing record heat waves, heavy snowfall, rainfall, and other extreme weather events around the world. However, many countries around the world, uh, including South Korea, uh, the guidelines for train maintenance is set by the temperature of the rails. As you can see in this table, uh, most countries have a maximum uh, rail temperature of around uh, 60 degrees Celsius, uh, but the pre previous studies show that rail temperatures uh, exceed 60 degrees Celsius when the air temperature is around 40 degrees Celsius. And with the recent, uh, recent record heat wave, uh, 6 degrees Celsius uh, seems a lot low. Uh, rare temperatures in summer season above the, the main management, management threshold are dangerous because they can increase the uh, risk of buckling of the continuous uh, weather rain. However, unfortunately, we cannot also apply a large amount of pre uh, pretension uh, to the CWR to reduce the risk of buckling because this can cause rare fractures in the winter season. Uh, this is due to the nature of the CWR, uh, where certain sections of the CWR have have an immovable zone, uh, where shrinkage and elongation are constrained, and uh, summer stretches are created in the rails during periods of very high or very low temperatures. Uh, this summer stress is the major cause of rail buckling or fracture. Uh, this means that the maintenance of the CWR needs to be managed not just based on the temperature, but on the stress uh, stresses uh, that reflect the condition of the rails. However, uh, since there is no displacement in the Im in the immovable zone of the CWR, uh, it is difficult to apply the conventional me measurement method uh, using strain gauges 
So it is necessary to develop a stress measurement method suitable for the CW1. Uh, now, uh, when we consider the possible stresses in the rails in more detail, uh, we can see that the uh, thermal stresses in the rails caused by the temperature change are quite high. Uh, based on Korean guidelines, uh, at a median temperature of 20, 20 degrees Celsius, uh, the gap between the highest and the lowest temperature of the rail is the same as 40 degrees Celsius, uh, 40 degrees Celsius. And if we calculate the thermal stress by considering the Young's modulus and the thermal expansion uh, coefficient of the rail in Korea, it is about 96 megapascal. In other words, uh, the stress uh, difference between the hottest and the coldest season is about uh, 1 in 92 megapascal. Uh, so it can be said that it is very high. Uh, so to measure the to measure the stress in the rails, we considered the characteristics, pros and cons of different stress measurement methods. Firstly, in the case of Korea, there are no bypass routes, so most maintenance work is uh, perform performed during short nighttime shutdowns. So non-destructive testing method should be applied. And uh, assuming that the, the entire route is inspected, the measurement cost should be low. In addition, uh, it should have an, an adequate level of penetration performance uh, into the, the object so that it can be measured with a good reflection of the internal stress condition. Finally, the measurement method should be easy to apply in the field and uh, have online monitoring capabilities. Considering these perspectives, our research team has developed a method to measure the stress-free temperature of the CWR by utilizing the characteristics of ultrasonic waves, the first step toward measuring rail stress. Uh, okay. Uh, these are the research uh, research objectives. Uh, the final goal of this study was to develop a stress-free temperature estimation, mes estimation method uh, for the CWR based on ultrasonic wave propagation. Uh, to achieve the goal, the measurement parameters such as input frequency, sensing distance, and so on were firstly set by numerical simulation. And then the algorithm to estimate the stress-free temperature was proposed uh, based on the characteristics of the propagating uh, ultrasonic wave uh, along the CWR. More specifically, uh, the algorithm utilizes the, the characteristic cha changes of the ultrasonic waves according to the boundary uh, temperature and loading conditions. More details are explained following few slides. In addition, the next phase of this research uh, aims to uh, develop an artificial intelligence algorithm that can estimate the stress-free temperature based on the developed algorithm so far. Uh, from now on, I'm going to uh, give you the, the working principle of the proposed algorithm. Uh, first, uh, let's take a look at how the, the ultrasonic uh, wave propagation characteristics are changed in the, the immo immovable zone of the CWR, where no displacements occurs, uh, and in the, the, the movable zone, in the movable zone near the expansion joints at both ends, where displacement uh, does occur. In the immovable zone, uh, even though there is no displacement, displacement due to the temperature change, the time of flight, TOF, uh, which is equivalent to the, the arrival time of the uh, wave changes as the temperature change due to the uh, uh, optimistic effect, uh, which is one of the nonlinear characteristics of the ultrasound. Uh, in the movable zone, 
Uh, the TOF is different from the TOF in the immovable zone uh, due to the effect of displacement as well as the acoustoelastic effect. The graphical representation of the TOF by temperature for each boundary condition is shown in the figure at the top right. And the two graphs, graphs uh, have different slopes. However, uh, regardless of the boundary conditions, uh, at the stress-free temperature, there is no stress in the rail theoretically. So the two graphs intersect at one point. And the temperature value at the point can be estimated uh, as the stress-free temperature. However, uh, it is important to note that in real-world CWR, there are no ideal movable zone where displacement is free to occur. So it is very difficult to measure TOF in the movable zone in practice. Fortunately, uh, the TOF graphs for movable zone can be estimated uh, from the, uh, the TOF data when tensile or compressive force corresponding to uh, thermal stresses in the immovable zone uh, are artif artificially applied to the rails. The key point is to uh, calculate, <clears throat> calculate an acoustoelastic coefficient, the equation at the bottom right, uh, from the, the TOF data obtained under loaded conditions. Well, the sigma subscript E, subscript e is the stress value due to the uh, artificially applied load on the rail. The delta C uh, subscript E is the wave, wave velocity uh, at the stress condition. And the C subscript zero is the wave velocity at the stress free temperature. Uh, by multiplying the calculated acoustic uh, coefficient by the TOF of the, of the immovable zone, the TOF graph of the movable zone can be estimated. If the uh, estimated TOF of the movable zone is overlapped on the measured T TOF graph of the immovable zone, uh, they intersect at a point, uh, the stress-free temperature as described before. In addition, uh, if the stress condition of the CWR changes due to operating age conditions of the rail and so on, uh, the TOF graph of the immovable zone will shift in the left or right directions and, uh, have, to, uh, and have different interse intersections uh, from the intersection corresponding to the, the initially derived stress free temperature. So it is uh, possible to estimate the change stress condition. Uh, this is the scheme of the proposed algorithm. Uh, before exp experimentally valid validating the proposed algorithm, uh, we uh, verified the uh, a basic idea of the algorithm through numerical simulations. To simplify the simulation and consider the left scale experiment, experimental conditions, uh, the simulation was performed assuming that the specimen was extracted in the form of a coupon from the web of the ray. As shown in the figure, the boundary conditions were set as fixed at one end and uh, free at, on, at another. And fixed at both ends to simulate the movable zone and immovable zones, respectively. And the numerical simulations were performed by varying the temperature values in each condition. For each condition, TOF graphs were derived as the temperature varies, and the uh, uh, point of intersection is the stress free temperature when the two graphs are overlapped. Finally, TOF graphs were obtained while applying uh, tensile or compressive forces uh, to, the, to, to the specimen corresponding to each temperature value in the fixed condition at both, at both ends, and the, the accuracy of the estimated stress-free temperature value 
was uh, verified by uh, comparing the uh, TOF graphs. The target used in the numerical simulation was KR6 rail, which, which is mainly used for the CWR for high speed trains in Korea. And the shape of the specimen uh, extracted from the web of the rail was set as the simulation model as described earlier. Uh, physical properties such as Young's modulus and Lamy constants, uh, which are used in numerical simulation, uh, generally vary uh, with temperature. And hence, uh, the, the ultrasonic wave response data according to the changed temperature was obtained by applied, applying the physical properties as shown in the table right, uh, right bottom obtained from previous studies. Uh, for the simulation validation, 20 degrees Celsius was assumed to the, the, the stress-free temperature, and the simulations were run from each condition from minus 20 to uh, plus 60, 60 degrees Celsius uh, in increase increments of uh, 20 degrees Celsius. In the first two, first two cases with different boundary conditions, and the temperature variation, the research uh, showed an increase in the TOF as the temperature increased. It's shown in the figure on the bottom left, uh, which means that the, the, the wave velocity uh, slows, slows down. On the other hand, uh, in the first loading case, uh, we can see that the ultrasonic wave velocity increases uh, as the compressive force increases in the temperature condition above the stress-free temperature. Uh, and the ultrasonic wave velocity uh, decreases as the tensile force increases uh, in the temperature condition below the stress-free temperature. Oh, when the three TOF graphs are superimposed, as shown in the figure on the right, the three TOF graphs intersect at a point and uh, at one point, and the, the value the corresponding to this intersection uh, matches the assumed stress free temperature. Therefore, the proposed algorithm was analytically validated in this stage. And then we set up a lab scale experiment with the same conditions as the simulation. Uh, a specimen was extracted from the web of the, the actual KR60 rail, rail in the form of coupons and the tensile testing machine uh, comparable with the temperature chamber was used to perform uh, the, the experiment in the same uh, scenario as in the simulation. However, the different from, uh, difference uh, from the simulation was that the temperature increase uh, was uh, uh, set at a uh, tighter interval of 10 degrees, degrees Celsius increase, increments. And since the uh, tensile testing machine was used uh, for the experiment, so only tensile, tensile force could be applied. The results from the lab scale experiment using the tensile testing machine uh, with the temperature chamber are shown in the following figures. The pattern of uh, ultrasonic wave velocity variation is the same as the simulation results. However, as shown in the figure on the right, uh, the TOF graphs does not have perfectly straight lines, uh, and this might be due to error caused by tester grip as uh, grid setup, such as sleep. Uh, nevertheless, and 20 degrees Celsius, which was assumed to be the, the stress-free temperature, the three TOF graphs intersect well, uh, providing a first validation of the proposed algorithm. Uh, after the tensile test validation experiment, uh, we built a test bed that simulated a real-world 
CWR, and then a second validation experiment was conducted using the test bed. Uh, five two meter long KR60 rails were welded together based on the uh, thermite welding method to form a 10 meter long test specimen uh, with one end fixed, fixed uh, to a reaction wall and the other end uh, capable of applying tensile or compressed forces using hydraulic jacks. To increase the temperature of the rail, a heating tape was wrapped around the uh, entire surface of the rail, uh, except, except for the sensor attachment location, and the nine thermal couples were attached uh, to the foot of the rail to measure the surface temperature of the rail. Since no device was configured to cool down the temperature of the rail, so the experiment was only conducted in the uh, direction of increasing the temperature. In addition, on one summer couple was exposed to the outside air uh, to measure the outside air temperature as a reference value. Also, in the testbed, uh, testbed experiments, it was not possible to realize a, a complete movable zone due to the fasteners, so the the acoustoelastic coefficients was firstly obtained uh, as described before. Uh, this is the case of experimental experiment scenario one. The compressive force was increased from zero tons to five tons in increments of five tons. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Zero tons to 50 tons in, in, in increments of five tons and data was acquired until uh, five tons. Uh, in the second scenario, the stressful temperature was assumed to be 25 degrees Celsius, uh, which was the room temperature at the, at the time, and beta was acquired uh, while increasing the rate temperature to uh, 70 degrees, degrees Celsius uh, with uh, both ends fixed. Uh, there are no load conditions supplied uh, other, than, other than temperature. Uh, the third scenario was similar to the second second one, but allowed uh, for the introduction of a, a pretensioning force uh, with a pretensioning load of approximately uh, 35 tons, uh, increasing the stress-free temperature uh, from 25 degrees Celsius to approximately 41 degrees Celsius. In the last case, the data was obtained by remo uh, removing the constraint at the hydraulic, hydraulic jack position, not, not the uh, reaction wall position, and increasing the temperature uh, to validate the experiment. Uh, this slide shows the results from the test bed, ex test bed experiments. At first, uh, the acoustoelastic coefficient was calculating calculated uh, using the TOF data obtained from the scenario one, uh, which was the compressive loading case. Here, does, uh, here uh, the slope of this graph is shown on the uh, right side, uh, means the, the acoustoelastic coefficient. And then uh, the acoustoelastic uh, coefficient was multiplied by the data obtained from the scenario two which was the temperature case for the fixed both ends. Uh, through this, the TOF data for the movable zone was simulated. Uh, the estimated TOF data is uh, uh, compared to the measured data from the scenario four. Uh, as you can see in the right figure and table, the two graphs are much well with a very low uh, error rate. Uh, it means that the, the stress-free temperature of the CWR can be estimated from the data uh, calculated using the acoustoelastic coefficient uh, rather than directly uh, measured in the movable zone. In this slide, uh, we summarize the results of the experiment uh, to estimate the stress-free temperature in our test bed. Uh, first, the estimated data uh, for the movable zone uh, shown in the previous slide, blue line, uh, was superimposed on the TOF graph 
obtained from scenario two, which is the temperature case in the flexible sense uh, without any pre-stress. Uh, in this case, uh, the assumed uh, stress-free temperature was 25 degrees Celsius, and two graphs uh, intersect, intersected at the two 20, uh, 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, so the, the stress-free temperature was successfully estimated in this case. Next, uh, the estimated data for the movable zone, blue line, was superimposed on the TOF graph obtained from the scenario three, uh, which is the temperature case in the fixed both ends with with uh, pre-stress. In this case, uh, the pre uh, pre-stress was applied uh, so that the stress free temperature was uh, around forty one degrees Celsius. Uh, but the but the experimental results uh, showed that the two graphs intersected at around forty three uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, on error of about two degrees Celsius. The error is likely due to the, the fact, fact that the real temperature was measured at the surface uh, while the uh, ultrasound uh, penetrated at the rail reflecting the temperature condition is, conditions inside. Uh, this needs to be additionally confirmed by further research. Anyway, the level, the level of error is very low, so this case can be also considered uh, successfully uh, validated. Okay, <clears throat> this is my conclusion. Uh, an algorithm to estimate the stress-free temperature of the CWR based on the characteristics of the propagating waves, uh, propagating ultrasonic waves, uh, specifically utilizing the, the acoustoelastic uh, effect. Uh, the proposed algorithm was validated uh, through the numerical simulation and two, ty uh, and two types of left-scale experiments. Uh, the results uh, contained, uh, contained some errors, uh, but the level of the error can be acceptable, and hence, and hence uh, we can uh, say that the algorithm was successfully developed. However, we are still uh, lacking experimental cases and need results from uh, field experiments. So this will be a uh, future work in progress. If you have a, a valuable chance like this time, uh, it would be great uh, to introduce some of the things uh, that are, are further validated by future work, future research. Thank you for thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Uh, this uh, these are my uh, email address and phone number. If you have any questions, or uh, uh, you can contact. Uh, don't hesitate. Thank you again. Okay.